Ian Campbell, 2017 World Bodyboard Champion, has had a life full of insane bodyboarding moments. Today we're going to talk about the top five. Go for it, the first one. Yeah, so why me a shore break? Back in 2011, I think it was, a long time ago, and my first trip to the North Shore of Hawaii. Uh, pretty special day for us. Uh, it was, you know, one, one of the bigger days that I've ever surfed in my life and uh, had a bunch of South Africans out there. Waimea has always been a place where as the South Africans have seemed to gravitate towards. And this day was just unbelievable. There was just so many good waves coming through. And halfway through the session, one of the other South African guys, Charles Pass, had said to me that the second wave of the set's generally the best waves coming through that day. And so I was sitting really deep in the lineup, like probably halfway out to the back and this big double up kind of foamy one came through and I chipped into it from the back and bottom turned into this wave and it was like, you know, it was the biggest wave I've ever surfed at that point. And as I'm riding through this wave, it just starts to turn on itself and just starts to get the biggest barrel that I've probably ever seen. And I remember looking up at one stage and just thinking to myself like, I can't even see the roof of the, of the barrel. Oh, wow. And so I was like riding through it and it just closed out and kind of like slammed me down. And the beatings there, it feels like all your limbs are trying to get ripped off. And basically just came up from that, like having a day like that, you know, just really special day, uh, really one that I'll remember forever. And it was like six months down the line, I got a notification from a friend, Ryan Janssens, and he's a fellow South African grew up on the same beach as me and he had shot a sequence of about 30 frames oh and one of those frames had got the cover of the movement and that was the last print edition of the movement that I can remember and so pretty special moment my first season in Hawaii first cover shot and only cover shot and obviously on the movement which puts a cherry on the top. Sick! Next up I want to talk about Chile yeah, so Arica, another really special place for me. Uh, this was in 2016. This was my first ever World Tour event win and it was in Arica. Um, we had ridden the previous day and we had got to the quarterfinals. I was in a heat against Pierre-Louis and obviously riding against Pierre, a really strong competitor, um, also a really good guy, so you don't want to always you know, go up against him knowing that he can get scores from nothing. Lucky enough to win that heat and um, that's when I went into the semi-finals against fellow countryman Tristan Roberts. Oh, cool. uh, Tristan and I actually, before we went out for that semi-final heat, we got like 30 minutes in the water that we're resetting the judging scoring. So we got 30 minutes out there at pretty much like six foot perfect Eureka and we were just trading off wave after wave and it was just so sick, like that moment was as good as, as the win because we were just like the only two in the lineup, everyone watching and managed to just be Tristan and Nat and went into the final against uh, Ormary Laverne and I've, Moz is always someone I've looked up to, always someone that uh, is really a standout in, in the bodyboarding world, he's super fit, super healthy, uh, he trains a lot and he's, he's just an absolute beast in competition and I was lucky enough to, to pull out the win. I was getting really nice like barrels and cover-ups and coming out and back flipping out of the bowls. And yeah, just really fortunate to, to kind of get that heat win against Mars and obviously win my first ever uh, World Tour event win. So yeah. just super special moment, good, good people around me, good crew and yeah, one, one highlight for sure. Brilliant, epic tale. Okay, moving on to Brazil. Itacoachara, another very special place, one that's really close to my heart. Uh, we stay with an amazing family there, and I think when you stay with a family and you're kind of connected into the, the local culture, it really, it does something different when you get good waves and, and score good waves, especially in the events. And this one was exactly that, you know. I go into another quarterfinal with Pierre, um, Again, someone that's extremely dangerous in, in conditions that we were surfing. And yeah, I just, you know, I, I paddled out. I was watching the lineup for a long time and I could see all these lefts coming through and they were just like big, beautiful lefts looking like pipeline. And I'd been watching these for pretty much the whole time that we were there. 
And as I was watching them, I was seeing like more consistent ones coming through. And I paddled out, got into like the second or third wave of the heat. And I was bottom turning this one and I was like, this thing's like pipe, you know, it just like kind of stood up, just grew along and I just bottom turned into it and just like flying through this thing and I could just see it barreling and slow, ended up slowing down in the barrel to like maximize the time in. And as I was coming out, it horseshoed and bowled on me and I just hit the, hit the horseshoe and did a reverse air and kind of landed in front of the whiteboard and rode up onto the beach. No way. And it was just like the whole crew, so like everyone that we were traveling with at the time was just like going nuts on the beach and just super pumped up. And yeah, it was a 10 point ride and ended up with a 10 and a 6.5 and actually put Pierre into combination, no which is something that doesn't happen too often for him and, and very, very special moment for me, you know, going up against someone as strong as him. Sick, how oh, good, amazing memory, cool. Okay, so now we're on to Portugal. Yeah, so Portugal is another really special place for me. Um, this, is, this was the Nazare event in 2017. I needed to make it into the final in order to win the world title. I had my girlfriend at the time, now my wife Rosie on the beach with her brother and a whole bunch of South Africans that were all there. And this was another huge moment for me, uh, something that I've dreamed about pretty much my entire life is to, to win a world title. And ironically, the beach that we were surfing at is Praia de Nort, which is North Beach. I grew up on a beach in Durban called North Beach, and so it seemed a little bit like fate, but um, I went against Diego Cabrera, who is an animal in the water, and especially in competition, he's, he's one of the, the top, top guys. And I went up against him in this heat and it was super intense. Uh, he was chasing me up and down the lineup the whole time. So I ended up trying to paddle away and got a, a couple good scores in the time. And during the whole heat, you know, you look like it's kind of a, a blur at this point, but just getting out the water, I remember like riding to the beach and having Alex Leon at the time. He walked down there with a, with a trophy. And I just remember like, you know, you just, your whole like, body just becomes all lame and just like so drained from like all the emotion and just standing there holding that trophy and and seeing rosie on the beach and that kind of stuff it's like that was a, it was a big one and, and a super super special moment how epic classic classic cool okay so on to the north shore of hawaii yeah, pipeline. Uh, this is one of my favorite waves to surf in the world. Uh, this is one of my favorite waves to surf in the world, not just because of what it is, but because of what it holds. You know, Hawaii is a special, very spiritual and, and strong place. I feel very connected when I go there. And I don't know if that's the culture or just that I've spent a lot of time there. But it's one of those places that I love to travel to and always had that pipe event um, as one that I really wanted to win. A little backstory behind this is I was actually sitting in my, my home where I was staying there. I had Mark Stewart in the room as well as Josh Kirkman. And we were talking about a couple things and Mark turned to me and he said, you know, you can actually, you could win this event. And from that point on, I just thought to myself, damn, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna win this event, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I started visualizing and really like, kind of like putting that in place. I remember hearing them calling my name and you know, just those small little things that you do when, you, when you're a competitor. And after a while, you know, you, you think, okay, well, this, this could become possible. And I went into the final heat. We've got Sammy Marantino, who's an extremely good rider. You've got multiple world champion, Jeff Hubbard as well as the newly crowned world champion, Tanner McDaniel. And so it's a star-studded heat, a uh, huge final, and Jeff comes out the gates with like a massive air reverse at back door and doesn't stick it. And I was just like, okay, this is gonna come down to the wire. Five seconds to go. Um, there's a set out the back that kind of reaches us. And I remember saying to Tanner, like, do you think this thing's gonna get to us? And he's like, I hope it doesn't, because he was in the lead at the time. Oh, why? And uh, yeah, the, the wave got to us, it got to us with five seconds to go. And I remember bottom turning and scooping into it and just like looking up and it was just this big wide barreling one. And I could hear the horn going while I was sitting in the barrel. And I was just like, all you gotta do is just hold on and come out of this. <laughs> and I just got blown out like into the channel. And I remember Sammy in front of me, just like with his arms up, like just so pumped up. 
and I, I jumped off the back and I just sat out there and I was just like, I don't know if that's the score or if it's not. And you just kind of be in that, that motion of like, it could be, it couldn't be the whole time. And didn't hear any scores and got to the beach and Tanner was standing there and he's just like, you've done it, man. And I was like, what? Like, what did I do? And he's like, no, you, you, you won pipe, like you're no the pipe champion. Yeah. And I just remember getting lifted up and getting cheered and there was just beer flying everywhere. And it was just one of those moments that I'll forever be super stoked with, uh, you know, winning a pipe event and then also winning it against those guys. And yeah, just really special and the locals and everyone around there. It's just, it was, it was a huge moment for me. Epic tale, Ian. That was so cool to hear. So yeah, what do you think guys? Put your comments below and give us a subscribe and a like and we'll keep on turning out this awesome footage. Catch you soon, Ian. <laughs>